In the previous section, we shared latest or buffered data between non-deterministic loops using various methods. By the end of this module, you will be able to use front panel communications to debug VIs and quickly monitor RTVIs during development. In lesson six, what we'll be talking about is different methods you can use to communicate between your RT target and your host, which is gonna be on your host computer. So the first thing we'll talk about is the use case for using front panel communication and then we're going to dive into uh, different methods that you can use to programmatically do network communication. So in this slide, we review a concept um, called front panel communication that we talked about earlier in this class. So as you can see here, when you develop an RT uh, VI on your host computer and you hit the run button, what happens is the functionality that's defined in your block diagram actually gets um, downloaded to your RT target. So your RT target is executing that functionality um, on the RT target itself. Uh, at the same time, um, you have your front panel open on your, um, on your host PC. And what's happening is there's something automatically being done behind the scenes where the controls and indicators that are on your block diagram, um, those are updated from your RT target and those values are updated back up to the front panel that's showing up on your host computer. So this, this, is a, this is a great feature, uh, just so you can start running your RTVIs and kind of immediately debug and kind of see what the controls and indicator values are um, on your host computer uh, while it's actually running on your RT target. So the use case for front panel communication is it's, it's great to debug VIs. Um, this way you can have your, 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 your front panel on your host computer. You can even open the block diagram on your host computer and start using debugging tools. For example, you can use highlight execution and you can use probes and breakpoints and things like that. And you can use all those debugging tools on your uh, host computer and it will actually um, affect the code that's, that's running on your RT target. Also, with front panel communication, you can easily um, update controls and look at indicator values on your host computer while the RTBI is actually running on your RT target as well. So it's, it's great to interact with very quickly um, with your RTVI and also to debug it. You can also quickly monitor VIs on the RT target during development, kind of what I just talked about, but there are some caveats to it. So one caveat is sections of code in your RTVI that contain front panel controls and indicators can actually introduce jitter. So if, if you imagine um, the pieces of code that have your uh, front panel controls and indicators, there's some extra stuff that has to go on in order for those controls and indicators to be, um, those values to be sent from your RT target up to your host computer uh, front panel, okay? So because of that, there's gonna be some jitter anytime you have a front panel control or indicator in a section of code on your RTBI. So if, if you have deterministic code, for example, or you need code that's running deterministically, um, you wouldn't want any of those front panel controls or indicators in those sections of code. Also, because there's things going on behind the scenes to implement the front panel communication, there's going to be some increased overhead with this method as well. Now you can use front panel communication to debug VIs and quickly monitor RTVIs during development. Next we will describe programmatic network communication and its use cases. In the previous section, we used front panel communication to debug VIs and quickly monitor RTVIs during development. By the end of this module, you will be able to describe programmatic network communication and its use cases. Okay, so now let's talk about how to use programmatic network communication. So on this slide, uh, we see at the bottom, we have our RT target. So in this case, we have our RT target, which is executing a RTVI, okay? And what's happening in here is, in the RTVI, we're programmatically handling that communication to the host, okay? So imagine the RTVI is now running, and then the RTVI knows what pieces of data it wants to communicate to the host, and it's gonna programmatically um, actually use something to communicate those specific pieces of data back up to the host. Now on your host computer, um, you're actually executing a host VI, which you uh, develop separately from your RT VI. 
So this host BI that you've developed on your Windows computer is running on your Windows computer and it's uh, using some programmatic methods to access the data that the RT target is communicating up to the host. Okay, so in this case, we are programmatically communicating over the network instead of using front panel communication. So in this slide, we see a couple of different use cases for programmatic network communication and uh, some examples and also which protocol um, that you can use to implement that use case. So let's talk about that top row first. So let's say we, we want to communicate uh, between our RT target and our host computer over the network, and we only need to transfer the latest value. So for example, maybe the host computer just needs to get the latest value of something. So for example, maybe the host computer and the host BI only needs to show the most current temperature that the RT target acquired. Okay? If that's the case, we can use uh, network published shared variables. Okay? Let's look at the second use case. So another use case would be, well, what if we need to transfer buffered values um, from the RT target to our host? So maybe, for example, we're acquiring several pieces of data on our RT target, and we need to transfer all those pieces of data um, historically, so buffered values, all the way up to our host computer, where maybe we're doing some more analysis and maybe file logging and things like that. Okay? And in this case, we don't want to lose any data that we've acquired. We want to send every piece of data that we acquired on the RT target and make sure every piece gets up to the host. So in this case, we need something to do uh, to transfer buffered values. So a protocol that we can use for that is network streams. And we'll talk about this uh, later on in this lesson as well. Also, um, sometimes there's a use case where you have to use other protocols. Uh, so, so for example, maybe, um, maybe you need to transfer data to, to a non-LabVIEW application, and may, maybe that application uses the standard protocol of TCP. Well, in that case, you can use um, a, a TCP uh, functions that we have in LabVIEW uh, to communicate from the RT target to some some piece of some some device that uh, is compatible with TCP protocols. Other standard protocols also include UDP, serial, and other things. So we'll talk about all these different uh, methods as we go through this lesson. Now you can describe programmatic network communication and its use cases. Next, we will share latest data over the network using network published shared variables. In the previous section, we described programmatic network communication and its use cases. By the end of this module, you will be able to share latest data over the network using network published shared variables. Okay, so let's say uh, you need to share latest values between your RT target and your host computer over the network. One way you can do this is using network published shared variables. So some of the use cases are, um, let's say your host computer needs to display the most recent I.O. values of the RT target. So for example, maybe you only care about what the current temperature is. In that case, you could use a network published shared variable to get that latest value. Or another use case is your RT target is monitoring the status of a stop button on the host computer. So your RT target may want to know if the user has pressed the stop button yet. And if the user has pressed the stop button, then go ahead and stop some loop or something on your RT target. Okay, so for the latest value use case and using network published shared variables, what you want to do is you want to create a shared variable, kind of the same way that we talked about before, except in the properties window, if you look at the top screenshot, what you want to do is set the variable type to network published. And once you've done that, you can use that variable uh, both on your RT target and also on your host computer. Okay, now let's take a look at that, that bottom uh, screenshot. Notice that now we're in the RT FIFO uh, category again, and um, there is an option there, like we saw before, for enable RT FIFO. Now, if you're using this network published shared variable inside a deterministic loop, and you want to communicate straight from the deterministic loop to your host computer, but you still want to preserve the determinism of your deterministic loop on your RT target, then you want to go ahead and enable the enable RT FIFO option. However, if you are communicating with this network shared variable from a non-deterministic loop on your RT target up to the host computer, then you can deselect the enable RT FIFO function. So the key thing to remember here is if you're using a network published shared variable for the latest value from a deterministic loop, make sure that uh, RT FIFO option is checked, and if it's from a non-deterministic loop on your RT target, disable it instead. So since we're only using the network published shared variable to communicate the latest value, 
uh, we want to make sure we go to the properties window and go to the network category and make sure use buffering is disabled. Since we only care about the latest value, we don't need to buffer any of these values. Okay, so what's the proper way to initialize uh, network published shared variables? So on, on this particular slide, we see an example graphic of how to initialize network published shared variables. So one way we can do it is at the very beginning of our application, we can write a meaningful value to the variable. So if we take a look at the left side of this block diagram, uh, we've initialized PID gains to something that makes sense. In this case, it's 15, 0.05, and 0. We've initialized our set point to something that makes sense. So in this case, 25, which represents the temperature in Celsius. Also, for the fan and stop RT, we initialized it with a false. And for the target data network variable, we also initialized it with a value as well. And the next thing we're doing is we're going into a while loop. And what we're doing is we're reading out the value of our network shared variables. So in this case, we're going to keep going in this while loop until the value that we read from that variable uh, matches the initial value that we initialized it with. And this ensures that those initialized values that we wrote to the network shared variables have actually propagated through the network shared variable engine. This way we ensure that uh, those values are actually in there. So what we're doing in this while loop is we keep checking this until all of those variables equal the initialized values that we had just set on the left, or uh, we time out. Okay, so notice that at the very bottom there's this control that says initialization timeout, and that's going to determine what the timeout value of this while loop is, so we don't accidentally check this forever if, if those values never match. And if it does timeout, uh, we notice that there's a timed out indicator that we can check if that is true or false to know whether this while loop happened to timeout. This is one example of how to initialize your pub network published shared variables properly. Okay, so when you're creating a network published shared variable, um, you can create these shared variables in this library either on your host computer target in your Project Explorer or on your RT target in your Project Explorer. So each location has its own advantages. Let's take a look at the left side of this table first. So if we were to create these network published shared variables on our RT target, they would be hosted on our RT target. So the advantage of having it on your RT target is that your RT target is going to be more reliable than a Windows computer, so it's less likely to crash. So your network published shared variables would reside on a more stable target. Let's say we decided to host our network published shared variables on our host PC instead, so on our Windows computer. Some advantages of hosting it on your host PC include the fact that on your RT target, your RT target is actually going to have less memory and less CPU power on it than a Windows computer. So by hosting it on a Windows computer, you use less resources on your RT target and allow your RT target resources to be used more for uh, your RT VI and things like that. Your host computer generally is going to have lots of CPU power and lots of memory as well. Also, if you're hosting them on your host PC, if you're using the LabVIEW DSC or Data Logging and Supervisory Control module, uh, you have some of those features available to you as well. The LabVIEW Data Logging and Supervisory Control Module allows you to connect LabVIEW to existing high channel count industrial systems and uh, log data to historical databases, set alarms, manage events, and things like that. So if you happen to be using that module, you have some features that you can uh, take advantage of if you host your network published shared variables on your host PC. Also, when you create network published shared variables, every time some target reads from them, it uses up some resources on whatever target the variables are hosted on. So again, your RT target is going to have less resources generally than a host computer. So if you have some network published shared variables that are being read from several targets, so maybe multiple computers and multiple RT targets, then it's probably better to host the network shared variables on a host computer that has a lot of resources. That way, when other targets are accessing it, the host computer is going to have plenty of resources to go around and be able to handle that. Okay, so now let's talk about how to deploy network published shared variables. The easiest way to deploy network published shared variables is you would just run the VI that contains a network published shared variable. Once you run that VI, it will automatically deploy any network published shared variables that it uses. So one thing to keep in mind is all variables in a library deploy at the same time. So for example, if I was to deploy a network shared variable, and that network shared variable resided in a library 
that contained 10 network published shared variables, well, all 10 of those network published shared variables would deploy at the same time because they're all in the same library. One other thing to keep in mind is network published shared variables never automatically undeploy. So in fact, if I was to deploy 10 network shared variables onto an RT target, when I reboot that RT target, those network published shared variables will still be deployed on that RT target, even after a reboot. So how do you undeploy uh, variables if you need to? Uh, well, if you need to, you can do it programmatically by using the library undeploy library method of the application VI server class. Uh, you could also do it manually in the Project Explorer window by right-clicking the library and selecting undeploy. You could also do this in the distributed system manager as well. So here we have a graphic of our uh, temperature chamber controller project. So this is our course project. In exercise 5.3 and 6.1, we started working on it. In 6.1, we worked on the deterministic loop piece that you see on the right-hand side. And in exercise 6.1 and 6.2, we're going to work on the rest of it. We're going to finish out the non-deterministic loop, and we're also going to create the host VI. We're going to use various methods to do the network communication to finish up this course project. So at this point, go ahead and do exercise 6.1 and 6.2. Or you can also open up the module uh, where I do a demonstration of the solutions for exercise 6.1 and 6.2, and I'll walk through them there. Now you can share latest data over the network using network published shared variables. Next, we will describe characteristics of a network stream and establish a network stream connection.